while Canada is often seen as one of the great successful experiments in pluralism, and it is an ambition that so many Canadians genuinely share and really strive towards, it isn't easy. And our past itself is difficult, and this is something that we need to seek to address and redress, as is our present. And it's a reminder that while we all seek to find spaces where differences are valued and embraced rather than pushed aside or seen as threats. It is a complicated journey for all of our different societies and we're all on this path. So I think ultimately pluralism and the strength of people coming together to advocate for a more progressive world that's based on equality, dignity, respect and love will win over because it is those qualities that have an enduring quality, that have power beyond those more transient forces of, of violence and hate and patriarchy that our opposition is pushing forward every day of the year. Pluralism cannot be achieved by any one group in society, one sector, and it demands really an effort from every one of us, all of us, and it demands the leadership of you here in this room and sharing that across your organizations. It is a tough world out there, and there are days when I wake up as a journalist in the morning and I think, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And so it's just such an honor to be reminded of the incredible good work that good people are doing out there every day, day in, day out, often taking great personal risk to uphold, promote, foster pluralism. We live in a world in which anti-LGBT plus narratives are, are strong, powerful, spread quickly, and are well funded. And as the saying goes, lies have been halfway around the world before truth has had its breakfast. And it's, it's therefore very, very challenging to create narratives that will enable us to provide some kind of alternative, some kind of vision of LGBT plus people, wherever they are in the world, as citizens, as citizens who deserve rights and dignity and justice and love, as outlined in our, in our mission statement. One way we do that is a series of communication products called The Voices Of. And we work with a range of local partners from around the world to tell the stories of ordinary LGBT plus people, how they live. They tell the story that breaks that opposition, anti-pluralist narrative. They tell the story that this eloquent, interesting, person is your doctor, is the person serving you in the supermarket, is your kid's teacher, and that these are LGBT plus people. It's the narrative that we as a community are literally everywhere. Connect with what you said, uh, Matt, about when all these evil forces, they're trying so hard and they're coming together, I think the, the positive forces, the work you do or Outlaws does, I think we, we also have to push, we have to hold yeah. that line. If you're going around Kabul city at that time, a country in, in conflict for so long, you see a lot of sad people. Nobody's smiling, everybody's so angry because of the poverty, because of the violence and all of that. So I thought by painting these murals, by starting Outlaws, we are giving back to the society and also we are celebrating and cherishing our diversity and also somehow uh, contributing to the solution uh, because we thought that um, the people of Afghanistan, the ordinary people of Afghanistan, their voices are not heard. So by these murals, somehow the people who are painting with us will find a voice. And, and just to clarify that the beautiful murals that you see on these um, slides, if I'm not mistaken, are all gone. So. This is what pluralism looks like, and this is how you erase pluralism, quite literally, just by painting over it and covering it. When we got out, we continued our advocacy for Afghanistan's art and culture because we're going back. If not today, tomorrow, soon we will go back. 
I do not want all the gains that we had in terms of our culture, democracy rights to be gone. We have to preserve those. So my work at this moment is doing a lot of advocacy uh, for, the, for the rights of artists, activists, promoting and protecting Afghanistan's art and culture. Like you, I have to maintain this positive, optimistic outlook. But at times, I worry that it prevents me seeing the reality of what is going to happen. I just wonder whether that chimes with you, resonates with you, and if so, what can we do about it? It's like we, yes, we need to keep the optimism, otherwise we won't get out of bed in the morning, as you said, Kim, but we need to also make sure that we are conscious of what we're up against, because it's fierce and strong and powerful, and we have to be fierce and strong and powerful in our response. I think that your work just really exemplifies that idea of a muscular response to pluralism. So again, thank you all so much and thank you everyone for being here.